why don't we, uh, why don't we pray as we uh, jump into the Word, allow God to build faith in us for what He wants to do in us uh, and through us this morning. Father, we just thank You for Your Word. Uh, thank You, Lord, that we're just in Cambo, we're just relaxed, and uh, we just welcome You. We thank You that You're here, Holy Spirit. Come and breathe Your Word into our hearts. Lord, come and build a sense of faith and expectancy on the inside of us right now. In Jesus' mighty name, everyone said, Amen. 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 Wonderful. Well, it, it, when you turn to your Bibles, to 2 Corinthians chapter 3, and this morning I want to talk about freedom, uh, the Holy Spirit. Freedom that comes from the Holy Spirit. Freedom might be a little bit of a theme we have going for the next little while. Surprise, surprise. Now, the Holy Spirit, you know, Jesus said he's like the wind. You can't see him like you can't see the wind, but you can see the effects of the wind. So we can see the effects of the Spirit of God. And this scripture says that the effect that the Spirit of God has on human beings is freedom. Everyone say freedom. freedom. This is the effect that we see the Spirit of God has upon a human being, on a human life. And I remember the first time uh, I experienced anything of the Holy Spirit. And uh, I, used to, my, I used to be dragged along to uh, various different Baptist churches as I was growing up. Uh, my parents would take me to various Sunday schools, dragging me along by the collar. Uh, I didn't really, was, I wasn't really interested in any of it. But when I, um, when I started to learn guitar and I enjoyed music, uh, my parents were very cunning. How many of you know parents are very cunning? <laughs> and I thought, oh, Ryan, you'll be learning the guitar. Why don't you join the band? And I thought, that would be great. So I did join, joined the uh, church band, and I could play all of the first chord on every song and the last chord. <laughs> and that was about it. That's all I could do. And, uh, and so I joined the church band, and I was a part of the music. And this one particular Sunday, they had a, a guest speaker, and he was, was an Aussie, and he was wearing a suit. How many of you know you should always be aware of Aussies generally? <laughs> so definitely. <laughs> but he was a good guy and, and uh, he was just a guest ministry. I can't even remember his name, don't know who he was. But he came along and, uh, and I remember at the end of the, uh, when he sort of came up to speak, I was still sitting in the corner with the worship team there with our instruments. And uh, as he began to introduce himself, he pointed over to the worship team and said, Worship team, come on up here. And I thought, oh no, I'm in trouble. And he lined us up, and I was down that end, and he started down this end, just praying one at a time. And one at a time, people just hit the ground poof, when he prayed for them. And I could tell he wasn't pushing or anything like that. He was just sort of touching their heads sometimes, but just, just praying. I don't know what he was praying, I can't remember. But I do remember just thinking, oh my goodness. There ain't no way that's happening to me. There ain't no way I'm going to fall on the ground. And he just went down the line, and I was still like, I'll just close my eyes <laughs> and just wait for him to pass on by. And I closed my eyes, and as he went past me, he just touched my head. And that moment, I felt the power of heaven is like a thousand volts of pure love just <laughs> go right through me. Next thing, I was looking up at the ceiling. <laughs> uh, what was that? <laughs> I had no idea. I've never heard about the Holy Spirit. I didn't know that we could encounter God in such a real way that I had that day. And I am so glad, and especially as a young person, that I learned that God wasn't just stuck here in the Bible back then in those stories in the time of Noah and Moses, but that he is alive today, touching lives and changing lives today. Can anyone say amen to that? Amen. So I want to say, and just talking about the Holy Spirit, I kind of think of him, the Holy Spirit's a bit like the technology of heaven. Now, who likes technology? <laughs> you like technology? Yeah. Who's like me? You kind of have a bit of a love-hate relationship with technology. Sort of yeah. earthly technology. Yeah, uh, love it when it works, right? Yeah. But when it doesn't, <laughs> golly, you can pull your hair out sometimes, can't you? When it doesn't, I have this love-hate relationship with technology. And in fact, our daughter's uh, cell phone just this week got stolen out of her bag. Uh, at, at college. She was really gutted because she's such a good girl. She looks after her phone so well, but it was stolen from her this week. And, uh, and we realized, I think all of us realized uh, just how dependent we are upon technology. She said, it's so weird, it's so awkward now when I'm with crowds, I've got, you know, I don't know what to do because <laughs> I don't have my phone anymore. And we can become really dependent on the stuff, can't we? 
I know for my mother, it revolutionized her life when she got her first iPhone in her late 50s. Changed everything. I mean, she discovered that she could connect with people through email, through social media, through something in the palm of her hand, that it had maps that can direct you when you don't know where to go. Who's used the maps before? Just dial it in there. You don't even have to pull out the old map book, HH versus 68, you know, <laughs> map page. And, uh, you know, it, it can direct us. And, and uh, also, you can pretty much Google anything these days, can't you? Yep. Absolutely anything. You need to change a tire, just Google it. You don't need to, you know, fix your TV, Google it. You can just build a fence, Google it. You can just Google anything these days. It's like an information highway. And uh, it even, even helps you to manage your, your finances, doesn't it? You can do your finances just from uh, your phone right there. And I say that the Holy Spirit is kind of like technology, kind of like our smartphone uh, in the sense He's the technology of heaven that, that he is the one who gives us a direct connection with heaven, doesn't he? Mm. The Holy Spirit. We have the Father, we have Jesus the Son, and we have the Holy Spirit. He is our direct connection with heaven, with the Father. And he also directs and guides us through life. He gives us access to information through revelation. He, he will speak to us about situations we're going through and give us his perspective on it and he even helps us with our finances amen mm -hmm. and in fact every year of our lives parenting uh, our work life our relationships the holy spirit helps us with these things and clearly the uh, fundamental difference of course with the holy spirit is that uh, he's a person isn't he the holy spirit is not an it <coughs> like a smartphone he is a person amen and so why don't you turn to John 16. You're going to get my little... Thank you very much. Have that. In John 16, Jesus talks about the Holy Spirit. He says, I have much more to say to you, more than you can now bear. But when He, the Spirit of truth, comes, He will guide you into all truth. Or that word could be reality. He will guide you into all reality. He will not speak of his own. He will speak only what he hears and he will tell you what is yet to come. He will glorify me because it is from me uh, that he will receive uh, what he will make known to you. Do you get the picture? So in other words, the Holy Spirit is the one who takes everything that Jesus died to give us on the cross. Everything that he paid with his own precious blood to give us forgiveness and freedom and, and hope and peace and, 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 and the answers to life. All of these things he, he gives to us and we receive them. The Holy Spirit will make them known to us. And so it's important that we know the Holy Spirit. Amen. And sometimes it can make people feel a little bit uncomfortable, I know, because sometimes we can be kind of cool with God the Father, because, you know, fathers are cool. We, we understand fathers and good fathers. And, and we can be cool with Jesus because he's our friend and we, we see him in the Gospels. He was a man and, and he was a carpenter. And we can relate to that. But when it comes to the Holy Spirit, it can get you know, a little bit ooky spooky sometimes. And people can feel, even in church, a little less comfortable with the Holy Spirit. Am I right? But, uh, but we need the Holy Spirit because what Jesus died to give us on the cross, it says that the Holy Spirit, Jesus said, is the one who comes and makes it known to us. He's the one who brings the reality of those things into our lives. And so if you're wondering, man, I've been a Christian for years, but there's things I haven't experienced, promises that Jesus has for me that I'm yet to experience, maybe the key is knowing the Holy Spirit who brings those things into our lives, who makes them known, who brings the reality of God to us. Can someone say amen? amen. I need you to help me out this morning. You're sitting there like stunned mullets. <laughs> and so since Jesus Christ, he has come and he set us free, whom the Son sets free is free, is free indeed. See us free from sin, from bondage, from sickness, from darkness, from depression, from hopelessness. He's brought us out of all that muck and he's brought us into something because Jesus is the one who set us free. It's the Holy Spirit who comes and makes it known to us, who empowers us to now walk in the freedom that Jesus died to give us. The Holy Spirit empowers us with the freedom to walk in the new life 
that we have in Christ. And so I want to look at a few things that are in areas that the Holy Spirit brings freedom to us in, where he makes known the freedom that Jesus won for us at the cross. So are you ready? Yep. Yeah. The first one is this. The Holy Spirit brings freedom from guilt and condemnation. I hate guilt. Guilt is a nasty thing. And it's, and it's twin sister, shame. Guilt and shame is horrible on a human life. God never intended for anyone to live with guilt under a cloud of, of condemnation. And the problem is, is that a lot of people look at the church and think that God is the one condemning them when he's the one who's trying to bring forgiveness and life to them. Amen? Yeah. But guilt and condemnation is a horrible thing. And we all know the scripture in Romans 8, the great promise, therefore, there is now no condemnation. You want say no condemnation? No. no condemnation. For those who are in Christ Jesus, because through Christ Jesus, the law of the, uh, the, law of the Spirit who gives life has set you free from the law of sin and death. Paul's talking about two laws, the law of the spirit of life and the law of death. He's saying there's a law, a spiritual law, just like we have physical laws, like the law of gravity, say. The law of gravity that makes us makes us want to sin. It pulls us. The Bible says that as human beings, we just tend towards doing what is wrong preserving ourselves, making ourselves look good. And so we'll lie and we'll cheat and we'll lust and we'll have pride and we'll, we'll do all kinds of things. We'll envy, you know, all these things we tend towards just like gravity pushing us down. There's like a law called sin that leads to death, which is separation from our heavenly Father. But then it says there is another law, a higher law, called the law of the Spirit. And just like in the physical, there is a higher law than gravity. Who can tell what the higher law from gravity is? What's a greater law than gravity? The law of lift. The law of lift. Or what we call the law of aerodynamics. We see it every time a plane takes off, don't we? Is that right, Cliff? Yeah. It's called the law of aerodynamics. It overcomes and supersedes the law of gravity because... It lifts us above the law of gravity. So Paul is saying here, the law of the Spirit of God in our lives gives us victory over the law of sin and death, that law that holds us down under condemnation. Isn't that awesome? Wow. Yeah. Freedom from condemnation. You're free from condemnation this morning. Amen? Amen. Come on, that's good news. Remember Darlene Chick once saying, the Holy Spirit is the divine enabler of our frail human condition. The moment she spoke that, it just stuck on the inside of me. I thought, yeah, the Holy Spirit is the divine enabler of the frail human condition to assist us, to give us the power to do what we cannot do in ourselves. And why don't you put your hand on your heart right now? I want to minister this into your heart. In fact, why don't you pray this? Just close your eyes and pray, Holy Spirit, I receive your freedom from all guilt and condemnation, from the past, present and future. Thank you that I am free. Amen. You're free. You're free. Second one, we're free from the powers of darkness. Free from the powers of darkness. 1 John 4.4 4 says, You dead children are from God and you have overcome because the one who is in you is what? Greater. The one who is in you is greater than the one who is in the world. See, there are dark spiritual forces in this world that is behind fear and addiction and unbelief and self-hate and, and global things like terrorism and, 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 and the fear of the nations right now. There are, there are evil dark powers that are behind these things, sometimes very thinly veiled, uh, but they are there operating behind the scenes on the world platform and even in our interactions day to day. The enemy comes to steal, to kill and to destroy and uh, I just love to think of it like a can of Coke. You know, sometimes if, if I likened uh, your life to a can of Coke, I didn't bring one this morning, but it's like the enemy loves to come along and, and just kind of, the Bible says he's like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. And he likes to just pop the lid on our lives, just, just loves to devour us, just kind of take our joy, take our peace, just, you know, take our freedom and just kind of devour us 
like we devour, devour a can of Coke. But what would happen if I shook that can of Coke up first? <laughs> what would happen if I gave that good old say, like you did, you know, to your friends, you know, before, like my kids love to do to their brother and sister, you know, give it a little bit of a shake up and, and quiet over here. And so that can of Coke gets rock hard. And what happens now if you're like that, the enemy comes and he thinks, oh, I'm going to come and mess with Pete's life today. I'm just going to flip the old lid on that thing and I'm going to mess with it. I'm going to devour everything on the inside of him that's good, that's from God. What's going to happen now? Suddenly, the enemy's got to get something in the face, isn't he? Something's going to come back. He's going to be the one with egg on his face and Pete is going to be fine. And this is the same picture. Greater is he who is in you. See, when we have the Holy Spirit on the inside of us, it's like the pressure that comes from heaven. It's not us getting all worked up, but, da, da, da. but the pressure of the power of the Holy Spirit in our lives causes us to be greater than the pressure of this world and the pressure that the enemy would try to bring against us. So when that dirty old devil comes around trying to mess with us and trying to cause mischief in our lives, how many of you know he's going to get something right back that he was not expecting? Get out of here, devil. Amen? Amen. We can tell him where to go because we have overcome. The Holy Spirit brings us freedom from the powers of darkness. He brings us freedom to change. Well, hold on. Let's just do that freedom from the powers of darkness. Let's put your hand on your heart if you come on. Let's just pray for this. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. You brought us out of the kingdom of darkness into kingdom of light of your son and if there's anyone here this morning God that is not in that place God I pray that you'll just reach down and touch their life right now and just bring them through Father God from Lord just a life of hopelessness into the incredible life of purpose and freedom in you let's pray this pray Holy Spirit I receive your freedom from every power of darkness for greater are you within me than he who is in the world. I am free. Amen. How does that feel? We have freedom to change. Freedom to change. 2 Corinthians chapter 3 says, We with all, all with unveiled faces contemplate the Lord's glory are being transformed. That word is metamorpho. When we get the word metamorphosis, we change like from a caterpillar to a butterfly. My six-year-old the other week was just marveling how something so worm-like, she said, becomes something like a fairy. It's like, how does something so worm-like become like a fairy? How many of you know that is our story? We were worm-like in our sin, man, you know, but the Holy Spirit comes and it brings freedom to change. And it's not... From us white knuckling and trying harder, but the presence of God in our lives changes us from the inside out, from a worm like thing into a fairy, something glorious. It changes us. It says we are being transformed into uh, his image. Sorry, Rex, I'm not sure if you're comfortable with uh, do you feel comfortable being a fairy, mate? <laughs> My daughter likes fairies, she would be very impressed. Uh, we're being transformed not into a fairy but into his image amen yeah. into his image with ever increasing glory which comes from the Lord who is the Holy Spirit he brings the freedom uh, to change in, uh, into our lives it's why so many bad diets and New Year's resolutions don't work because we're trying to do it on willpower when we need Holy Spirit power let's just move on to the next one it gives us freedom to walk in power and boldness. Amen. I love 2 Timothy 1 7 says, For God did not give us a spirit of timidity or fear, but a spirit of power, of love, and of self discipline. Amen. 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 And in Acts 1 8, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, Jesus says, and you will be my witnesses. Why don't you put your hand on your heart just right now? Let's just minister this in camp mode. Just receive from the Holy Spirit as we go. Why don't you pray, Holy Spirit, I receive freedom from every fear and from intimidation to walk in the fullness of your power and love. I am free. Amen. Awesome. 
just a couple more quickly. There's so many of these. But I wanted to bring them out because we need to know this is what the Holy Spirit does when He comes upon a life. This is what He wants to. This is the effect where the Spirit of the Lord is. There is freedom from these things. I'm going to move into the positive. Freedom to walk in love. Freedom to walk in love. Romans 5.5 5, Hope does not put us to shame because... God's love, the Father's love, has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. See, most people find it easy to love people that they like. Amen? It's easy to love people that you like. But Jesus asks us to love people that kind of brush us the wrong way. People that we don't like. He even says to love our enemies. Ouch. Come on, someone say Ouch. <laughs> Even those that we just want to avoid or kind of, you know, that we have to work with. And so we just try to, you know, they work out, I'm going to work out, I'm just trying to avoid them. <coughs> Jesus says, no, you're to love them with my love. And so the Holy Spirit pours the Father's <coughs> love into our hearts. And that becomes the power that we now have. Because we are so loved by Him that now we can even love the unlovable. Amen. The presence of the Holy Spirit in our lives gives us power to walk in things like patience and forgiveness so that we can embrace others. We can't in our own strength. We'll go nuts. But when we're filled with the Father's love, and if you know, it, be, it becomes easy at times. It becomes easy when we're doing it in the Holy Spirit. And the final one I want to bring up this morning is the Holy Spirit brings freedom to live a holy and fruitful life. Well, it's Galatians 5.22, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. Uh, since uh, those who belong to Christ Jesus have been crucified to the flesh with its passions and desires, since we live by the Holy Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. And Paul says to the Galatians also that I say to you, walk by the Holy Spirit and you will not gratify or indulge the desires of the flesh. Let's do this one, one last time. Just put your hand on your heart again. God, I want to thank you that you call us to live fruitful lives. You call us to live holy lives as you are holy. But Lord, that's not some pretentious self-righteousness you're asking from us, but the very opposite. As we humble ourselves, acknowledge our need, that your grace comes and your Holy Spirit comes to lift us up, to cause us to walk in your love, joy and peace, to live a pure and holy life through the power of your Holy Spirit. Why don't you pray this? Pray, Holy Spirit, I receive your freedom from temptation and sin and to walk in the fruit of love, joy and peace. I am free. So the key to this, how do we receive the Holy Spirit so we can walk in this freedom from condemnation, freedom to be bold, freedom to live fruitful lives, freedom from fear, freedom from the powers of darkness, living and walking in this, what the Bible calls the glorious freedom of the sons and the daughters of God. How do we do this? And I think one of the greatest keys is simply receiving the Holy Spirit. Jesus breathed on his disciples. You remember that? And what did he say? He said, receive the Holy Spirit. He wants us to receive him. And Jesus gives this awesome story in Luke 11. He says, which of you fathers, speaking to people like me, dads, which of you fathers, and I'm sure this applies to mums as well, if your son or your daughter asks for a fish, Will he give him a snake instead? Imagine that. What do you have? What do you want for fish and chips, son? Go have some fish. Yeah, here's a snake. <laughs> or if he asks for an egg, we'll give him a, a scorpion, something bad. If you then, uh, though you're evil, we are corrupt in our love. We know how to still give good gifts to our children. How much more? Everyone say, how much more? How much more will your Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask Him? We just simply have to ask 
and receive. And I've just got there three really simple ways. If you're just going, man, I just don't know. I've never uh, received the Holy Spirit. I haven't felt the Holy Spirit. I haven't been maybe filled with the Holy Spirit or it's been a long time. I've never prayed in tongues. I'd, I'd like to pray in that heavenly language. Well, I want to tell you the simplest thing to do is, number one, simply ask in faith like Jesus said. Ask, Father, I'd like to receive your Holy Spirit, please. Will you fill me with your Holy Spirit? I ask Him every day. Every morning, I'll get out on my walk because I'm walking the beach saying, Lord, fill me with your Holy Spirit. Renew me on the inside today. I need your Holy Spirit. Number two, open your heart. Yeah. Just open your heart. I imagine something's like a door. And you just open that thing up. Just open wide the gates, the Bible says. Open that door. And if you're here and you don't know the Lord and you've never opened your heart to the Lord, I want to tell you it's as simple as just simply saying yes to Him. Just saying, God, and maybe you're not even sure if He's real or, or, or know a whole bunch about Him, but, but we've talked about how good He is this morning. Just to simply open your heart to, to say, God, I open my heart to you. I'm open to you coming into my life. I'm open to you coming and invading my world. And that's what we do to receive the Holy Spirit. We come, we ask in faith. We simply open our hearts. And number three, relax and wait. Who's good at relaxing? <laughs> Come on, who's good at relaxing? I oh, just had a really nice summer. And I'm sure you've been spending time on the beach, uh, chilling out with friends and family. And uh, we, we know how to relax when it's like that in that context. But sometimes when we get around the things of God, we kind of, I see Christians kind of go into this really uptight mode. <laughs> Like, I've got to receive, I've got to receive, I've got to receive. And it's like, it's like we're trying to make something happen in God. And I've discovered that sometimes that can be a hindrance to receiving what God wants to bring into our lives. Mm -hmm. That we receive the Holy Spirit in our hearts, in our life. The freedom that He wants to give to us, that Christ purchased for us on the cross, comes when we simply <sighs> relax, get into camp mode, and just wait. Because sometimes it takes time. Sometimes I'll see Christians pray. I prayed all 30 seconds and nothing happened. It's like, well, God's really, really old. He's been around a really long time. How many of you know old people are in no hurry for anything? It's wonderful. I love you, you know, over, I don't know, I'm not going to classify old. I'm going to have trouble really quick. But I love it, you know, someone said hey, it's old people and kids who get it, it's all of us in the middle that mess everything up, you know. It's true, but, but and God has been around a long time, he's called the ancient of days, and sometimes, you know, we just need to get over our microwave mentality where we want everything now. The other week I talked about the on-demand God because we love everything on demand right now. I want to watch it now, thank you very much. I don't want to have to wait for anything because we're not used to that. But sometimes when it comes to things of God, we just need a little bit of patience. Amen? Amen. And we just need to wait and allow God just to come and just to fill our lives. And sometimes it can just come so faint. You know, he showed Elijah, he wasn't in the wind, he wasn't in the earthquake, he wasn't in the fire, but he just came as a gentle breeze. And you just begin to go, oh, wow, I think I feel something. I feel this peace coming in over my life. And then as you wait and you just fix your, your eyes on heaven, your eyes on Jesus, over time that grows and that builds. And we begin to learn to sense the Holy Spirit in our lives. And then he begins to bring that freedom. And suddenly uh, you get caught up in this world of living life and doing life with God. And free from rejection, free from condemnation, free from the powers of darkness that have dogged you before, free from the sin that... You, before it was such a struggle to give up or, or stop doing, where well, now it's not about the sin anymore, it's just receiving the Holy Spirit and those things just kind of just kind of get unstuck and just fall away. And we're able to live in the victory that He gives us. Amen? Amen. This is the promise of God. So you ready to receive? Yeah. Tess, can you come on up and play a bit of mood music for us? <laughs> Oh, look, I just put my bottle in <laughs> Sorry, Phil. I try. Maybe I'm the old dog we're talking about. Hey, why don't you stand to your feet? Why don't you stand to your feet and um, just 
just been looking forward to this. Hey, this has been a little bit of camp mode. We might go a little bit over time, but hey, you're going to be at camp till 3 o'clock this afternoon anyway. <laughs> I won't keep you until then. I'll let you out. Too fairly easy. And why don't we just, um, why don't we just come and try like faith. Just close your eyes. Why don't you just put your hands out just in front of you like you're receiving a gift. Because that's how God wants us to position our lives. Like, like we're just going to receive. He's the great giver, and we're the great receivers. 